Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle and today I want to share with you our homeschool summer plans. So if you're new here, I have a nine-year-old, five-year-old, and two-year-old currently homeschooling my nine and five-year-old. So at the end of May, we will wrap up our school year, but we do continue to school during the summer. Just probably we switch gears into a couple different things. So the first part of this video, I'm going to show a specific curriculum that we will be either continuing or starting. And then the second half of the video, I'm actually going to switch to my computer and show you the outline and schedule and things like that that I keep in OneNote. So first, let's start with my nine-year-old. So she would have finished this third grade year and is going into her fourth grade year. So for math, we will continue math. We don't stop math. Now she is finishing up 2B. She will finish this by the end of May and be working into 3A. So we'll just keep chugging along on that. And I have a specific math video I will link above if you want to see kind of our journey with math. We are also continuing to work on math facts. So mainly multiplication and division at this point. She has addition and subtraction down. That's not something I make her practice. But we worked hard for multiplication and we're still chugging along on division too. So I picked up some of these fun just regular workbooks. And what I will have her do is just pick a page out of any of these workbooks. So for example, that was her most recent. And that will be her practice for the day. And again, I got a lot of these on the book outlet haul. I'll link that above if you want to see. But just some fun, different ways of doing her math facts. And that one. So she will continue math. And then she is finishing up. She will finish up by the end of May, wordly wise. And when she finishes that up, we will actually be transitioning both her and my younger daughter to doing all about spelling. Now, my oldest is naturally a pretty good speller. She learned to read phonetically, so that has worked in her favor a lot. But she's, especially since she's getting older, she's encountering a lot more complicated words. And phonetic spelling isn't really working to do to help that anymore. So she asked specifically if I could do some type of spelling curriculum so she can spell better. So my youngest is doing all about reading. She's half, well, about three quarters way through level one. So I figure I can do this together with both of them. And if it's way too easy for my nine-year-old, I can switch it up and do one with my five-year-old and two with her. But I have a feeling we can go through this together and make it work. So when she finishes Wordly Wise, we'll start that. And then for language arts, we finished lightning literature, so we are done with all of that. So reading and grammar, and, well, we'll continue grammar, but the bulk of that we finished. And I do not assign my daughter independent readers or anything during summer. She constantly is reading. In fact, I had to hide next year's language arts books because by if she found them, she'd read them all. She reads everything she can get her hands on, so I don't feel the need to assign any type of reading. But we will continue grammar and writing. I recently did a writing curriculum review on how we went with IEW. I wanted to start IEW towards the end of the year into the summer because I've heard it's a little bit more intensive. And I wanted her to have more of a free flow schedule and not so many things weighing her down that I would love to finish IEW if we started when we did, it should finish sometime beginning of September, middle of September. And that's when I'm thinking we'll pick up Lightning Literature Grade 4 and start there. So it's not too overwhelming, but we'll see how it works. So she is on week 7 for IEW. It's going really well. We She's really enjoyed it. I think her writing has improved. She likes the lessons. So we will be continuing that and we don't do a specific writing curriculum for her because again in this she does an, a lot of writing actually so I don't think it's necessary for her to have a specific writing curriculum because as you can see here she does a lot of writing for this so I don't think it's necessary and amazingly enough she doesn't complain about this so that's that's a win in my book so one thing I wanted to get farther on this year that we didn't is Michael Clay Thompson. We've really enjoyed it so far, but it's something that either gets pushed to the end. So we've only averaged probably maybe once or twice a week. 
So we haven't gotten as far as I wanted to, but I want to just work through this a little more with her in our practice island right now and just keep chugging along now that we have more time to do that. And just, again, this is just reading some pages and doing a couple exercises in the book. So nothing intensive at all. And then for grammar, I don't want her to forget a lot of the rules and things we've gone over. So what I did is I just took one of the old Brain Quest books we had, and if it um, had anything to do with grammar, I pulled it out real quick, and she has a stack. And what I have her do every day, Monday through Friday, she picks one of the papers and does it as a grammar review. Something else I did is Core Knowledge. If you didn't know, Core Knowledge is available free online. I printed some of their skills worksheets. Core Knowledge breaks it up into skills and like reading comprehension different things like that so you can go through and get the specific grammar worksheets and it's just a simple one like that so again i think that's great to pull out and use it so that is everything my nine-year-old will be doing next i'll move on to my five-year-old she will continue handwriting and again like i said before she will do the same thing where I just print out Core Knowledge, the skills workbook, because it combines phonics and writing at the same time. So she'll do simple worksheets like this, and this is enough for handwriting, and it does have handwriting practice worksheets. Get the count of it. And then some specific handwriting exercises. So again, she just has a stack of those that she does every day. We will finish up all about reading. And the only other thing she will do is um, continuing with her math. So pretty much she's doing the same stuff she's doing now. For group subjects, I'm gonna show you one of them and then the rest I'll probably show you in my computer. So there are a few things I wanted to cover that we didn't even have time to cover or didn't go deep enough this school year that I wanna do now. So our normal schedule on Mondays, we would be doing history because we finished Torchlight in May we have a chunk of time that we can stick something else in there. And what I really wanted to do was stick art in there. We haven't dove deep into art. We did a couple art studies and things like that, but we didn't go deep into pretty much like form and structure of art. So I picked these up and again, that's in that hall that I linked up above, but I picked up first grade, third grade, fourth grade, and these are the Harcourt books. I like how simple they are. A lesson, brief information, and then a little assignment that they can do. And what I figure is we will rotate between third grade and first grade art lessons. And I think it will just be a fun thing that we can do together and it provides that little bit of structure for me to teach from. So for the rest, I will actually turn you around and we'll work on my computer. I have this saved in OneNote, as you can see here. I'll link up above my video of how I use OneNote, but as you can see here, I have the homeschool year. And for summer, it has its own separate tab. And the first tab is summer plans. And what I like about using OneNote, it's kind of my homeschool brain dump, is I keep a running record of things I find throughout the year that I want to incorporate in summer. So it's a long list of things I can choose from when summertime comes. So these are the things I wanted to cover that I've written down. The things highlighted are things I definitely want to get to this summer. And then I also include, for example, my core knowledge human body units. I have resources I've come across that I want to use and I will put you know YouTube video Amazon places that reference this so I can go back and find it later so these are the schedules this is my nine-year-old and my five-year-old for schedules this is Monday through Saturday I only included Saturday because they have activities that happen on the weekends and as you can see here anything highlighted in green is things we do together Anything in blue is Lego club or co-op extracurricular type activities. So let's start with my nine-year-old. She'll again be doing dimensions. She'll be working on her math facts and wordly wise when she finishes wordly wise, which should be hopefully at the end of May, she will 
she and my five-year-old will start doing All About Spelling. So once we finish, she finishes Worldly Wise, that's where All About Spelling will go. We'll break for lunch, she will do her IEW, we will do our Michael Clay Thompson, and then the art, the Harcourt art books I was showing you. Tuesday, same thing. Instead of Michael Clay Thompson, she'll do one of those grammar worksheets I showed you. And then one of the units I wanted to get to is finance, personal finance. We've talked about money in Dimensions Math and adding and subtracting, buying things, but I want them to have a better idea of personal finance. So you can see here I have two separate little things. I have human body and personal finance. So for personal finance, I have the resources here. And a lot of these are, some of them are books. For example, Make Your Own Money is a book. And again, I put the library. They have that book so I can take it out. But a lot of these come from, click right here, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. So what's nice is they have kind of like book lesson plans that go with a specific book. So I will show you this flat the cat. So it's got kind of what the lesson's about, the age level it's targeted at, what you're gonna be covering, the objectives, the things you'll need. So pretty much you just need the um, book. And again, the library has the book and then you can print out the handouts and different activities. So it kind of goes steps through step how you can use the book. There's questions you can use throughout it. So I think it'll be a good starting off point talking about setting a budget. One of the activities is you get to actually do the price list. So you have to figure out how much these things will cost, how much your budget is, what you can afford in that, and again, there's a fun little activity where you have, you know, prices for things. You have to go shopping. Comprehension questions that go along with that. Then you have read aloud questions. And again, creating your own budget based on the book. So I think this is a really awesome resource. And again, going back to that, if you go to this website, and again, I'll link the resources down below that I have, but if you go to teacher resources over here in the corner, education level, I do pre-K through five because obviously that's my kids' age levels. I go to economics because we're in personal finances down here as well. And then resource types. They have a bunch of different, but I choose lesson. And what's nice is it gives different activities, ebooks, online interactive things you can do, and it gives you a lot of lesson plans based on books, which is really cool. Because that, again, is really my age for my kids that works really well. So what you see here is a lot of those books mainly that it's talking about and the direct link so I don't have to look later to find it. And I did put kind of what it's about, budget, scarcity, savings, what bartering means, buyers and goods. So we'll slowly make through this lesson. And again, every Tuesday we'll probably have another book, another unit we'll go through. We have co-op Tuesdays and Fridays. One is a playground day, one is a more structured activity day. Same thing, she'll do IEW. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday are pretty similar and Tuesday and Thursday are pretty similar. Difference with Thursday is science. For science, I really wanted to do the human body. We have not done a human body unit. And what I'm doing for science for human body is actually combining a couple things. The main thing I'll be pulling from is core knowledge science, specifically K or first through fourth grade. They also in grade five have a reproduction puberty unit, which we'll be touching on, but not going through the entire thing. But what I did here is I just pulled from the website the main things they'll be covering. This is all in the beginning that you can look at. It'll tell you the main areas we'll be covering. Then I looked at the books I wanted to use. You saw a lot of those in my book haul. For example, the thrift books ones, I've already got that. 
Amazon, these are the ones I was considering getting. Then I have libraries. Which library has which books? Then, in my type A personality, I went through each unit and decided what we'd be using where. For example, you can see we use Magic School Bus here. We have a the parts book, which is up here. One of the main things I'll be using is this. Again, that was in this book called The Human Body for Every Kid. It comes with experiments with hands-on things. So I went through and decided which experiments out of that book I will be using. And I wrote the page number. To take it even further, I then went to this section and, for example, page 9. When I use that, I know these are the supplies I'll need. Page 72 experiment, I'll just need a pencil, so on, so on. So I can just quickly reference this and not have to spend a lot of time. These are some of the, I also have a sticker book. So during that Sabbath week, this is one of the things I did. I made sure I downloaded all the Cornellage readers to my kid's tablet. I downloaded the teacher guides to an external drive for me so it doesn't take up a lot of my computer space. Downloaded some ebooks for the um, nutrition unit we'll be doing, and then I planned the finance unit. So that is pretty much the human body. And you can see here the nutrition units. For example, we'll be using the My Plate. And again, I'll link this down below, but it has different nutritional information on it, worksheets. I actually printed out the ones I'll be using. I will link those down below for the grade levels, but it just talks about basic nutrition and some exercises and worksheets to go along with that. Because we have talked about nutrition, food labels, things like that in the past, but I just wanted to touch on some more topics in specifically nutrition. So that takes care of that. One, one thing I wanted to also include was two truths and a lie. This is something that was incorporated in our torchlight curriculum and we just did not have a time to get through it and I really, really enjoyed the books. So I wanted to come back to it. So this is something we'll be Coming back, back to, so these are the two Truths and Lie books we have. And one nice thing is, if you go to the author's website, she actually has resources you can use there. So kind of um, education guide, little word puzzles. The game is really fun too. But what's really nice is, click on this, and it gives you kind of a how-to. And what's really nice is it gives you this fact or fiction. So after you read each story, you can fill this out. You can search online or in books, facts to check, things like that. So it's a quick sheet you can use. And this is one of the sheets we used when we did it. So that is something we will be doing as well. So that is the main thing. And again, my five-year-old, she will do Pretty much the same schedule she has now. Math, all about reading. Handwriting is just core knowledge skills that I've printed out for handwriting. And she will join us with the art, money, two truths, science, all that. She'll be doing that. And then you can see over here, I laid out what they'll be doing, the things I wanted to cover. I laid out when we will finish specific units so I know when we can start other things. So for example, I know we'll finish our science around this time, which means we can move in to the human body. When we finish geography, I know we can move in to our money unit, that type of stuff. Extras, I wanted to write down their extracurricular so I had an idea of what to do because after writing this, I realized they don't need to be in anything else. They have enough going on this summer. And if you're not aware, most libraries, I'm pretty sure all of them have summer reading programs, which are free and have lots of free activities and fun things for the kids, I highly suggest you check out your library for the summer reading. So one other thing you can see in this section here, May we'll be covering two, two truths and lie. June we will be doing a Bookshark Disney unit. It was a free download. My oldest has really become, in, come in, become interested in Walt Disney lately, so we're going to pick up the biography on him and use the Bookshark free Disney unit to go through that. And then July, I want to do something 
specifically related to music, because again, art and music is something we didn't cover a lot of. We talked about a lot of composers and listened to a lot of music, but I want to go deeper. So it will either be doing something, the recorder, the we can do piano, we can do specific story of the orchestra, like the musicians, these are books we already own, so I haven't quite decided what music thing we'll be doing July, but I know there will be a July unit on music we'll be doing. But that is the, oh, here's the books I'll be using for the Disney unit. So that is our summer plans. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If not, thank you for watching.